Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. So today's video is going to be on rye whiskeys and what to expect at different price points. Because I know when you're going down that aisle and you see all those different bottles from all these different brands, some of which you're not going to know, you know, what's the deal, right? And like, what's the difference between a $20 rye and a $50 rye and a $100 rye? Are they really that different? Well, that's kind of what this whole video is going to be about. And to do this, I decided, you know what, let me pick two bottles of rye from each price point basically you know two twenty dish dollar rise two forty to fifty dollar rise and two eighty to a hundred dollar rise and we'll taste them all we'll see what the differences are so that you can kind of get an example of what to expect in those price categories of course there are hit and misses in everything so they're not all going to be winners out there uh, but hopefully this will be a little bit of a guide uh, because that's the whole reason I do this channel is try to help you, the viewer, make education, educated decisions when you're making your purchases. Because I know when I started out, that wasn't the case. It wasn't available. So that's why I started the channel. But anyway, I'm also going to, at the end of this, for my patrons, and I do a Patreon channel at patreon.com slash liquorhound, where I'm able to, with their help, continue buying these bottles myself so that I can review them for you. But for them, I always do a little bonus content, so I'm going to review this for them at the very end. The Van Winkle Family Reserve Rye. Uh, this is from 09. So this bottle currently, I think, is about $2,000 for this 09 vintage, maybe a little more than that. But back in the day, you know, you were getting them at $90, $75, somewhere in there. 13-year-old rye, ultra, ultra premium there. We'll taste and, you know, see what we think about it and kind of again. Just one more little category. But if you're joining me here on YouTube, again, as always, greatly appreciate each and every one of my viewers. And we're going to go ahead and get started now with Bullet Rye. Bullet Rye, 90 proof, is MGP rye coming out of Indiana. So it is a 95% rye, 5% mash bill at a four to seven year old uh, range for about $22 to $25. Bullet Rye, find it everywhere. Then you have Old Forester Rye. Old Forester rye is about a four to six year old rye. And this one is 65% rye, 20% barley, and 15% corn. Heavy barley component enables them to do natural fermentation without adding any enzymes. They like to talk about that on the website, so you can check that out. It is 100 proof, again, $22, $25. From there, we're going to step up to the price mid range rye. We have Pikesville rye coming out of Heaven Hill, six plus year old rye. And this one is a very, very uh, low rye, high corn uh, mash bill because you have to be at least 51% or more rye to be a rye whiskey. And this one is 51% rye, 39% corn, and 10% barley. 110 proof, 45, 50 bucks. Then we're going to go to Old Pepper. Old Pepper is actually, they're in the process of creating their own product, but right now they are still sourcing uh MGP, again, Indiana bourbon. So that's going to be 95 rye, 5% uh, barley, 110 proof for, again, about $50 right now. This is a single barrel product. So I do see, I've had several. They're all good. They might be a little different, and that's just the nature of single barrels. Uh, since they're not blending barrels, you can't really form it. You just have to just go with what it is. But we're going to go ahead and check and see what that's like. Then from there, we're going to step up to the premium rye category. At $80, you have my Saints Alley, the Nobleman Rye. This was my Rye of the Year last year. To me, and to many people, this is a fantastic, flavorful rye. Um, what we did for this one, Jonathan and I, we actually, Jonathan Licorice, he's the distiller up at Iron Root Distillery where I work, and we bring Saints Alley out of. What we did was we brought in a lot of MGP barrels, and we aged them up here in Texas. And as they're aging up, and they start getting to about the four five, six year range. Um, we took half of those barrels, put them in Tokai casks, and we let them sit in there for 11, 12 months, something like that. And then we actually work a blend. Now, when we're working the blend, we'll add in a little bit of iron root rye because iron root rye is very viscous coming off that big copper pot still they have. And so that just adds a little, just a little more complexity, it almost makes everything just come together and feel a little more oily. I love that about it. And so for this one, the Tokai cask is actually a Hungarian sweet wine, very similar to Sauternes. And the one thing Sauternes will usually give you is kind of like a buttery tone. And 
And these, the Tokai coming out of Hungary, they give us more of a savory, almost like a smoked meat component, smoked prosciutto, let's say. And it was just a phenol compound that just comes across on the palate that is just delicious. Um, but that's the one we're going to do next at $80. And then from there, we're going to finish up with Redemption Rye. 10-year-old rye out of Redemption, 116.2 proof, MGP bourbon. Okay, so this is 95.5 rye as well. Um, so really we have, you know, this is MGP, MGP, MGP with a little iron root, and MGP. So we've got a lot of that going on. But we're going to go ahead and taste them, nose them, see what we think. Starting with Bullet Rye. 22 to $25. On the nose, let me get, make sure I get it really nice and coated. Yeah, it is on the lighter profile. It is more of the grape skins, fresh rye grain crushed and then you get like some pepper some cinnamon has a little bit of noticeable bite to it at 90 proof so it's a little little sharp but again young rice tend to be that way now this is four to seven but again four to seven depends on the climate depends on the location in the rick house they can mature pretty slow but a lot of citrus a lot of orange on this one Let's go ahead and taste it. Mm. Nice, vibrant rye up front. Sweet, caramel, big cracked rye, orange oil heavy. A little bit of a baked apple. A little oak in there as well. Let me go for a second taste. Yeah, it's a little more like a, a cracked rye granola essence early. Then you immediately get all that kind of caramel, orange oil, baking spices. A little bit of leather, little oak. To me, that's a little more citrus forward as far as the orange is a little dominant with a little bit of a, a little cherry, little apple thing going on. But overall, very, very nice rye. Probably, for me, I would say that's great for cocktails because you need a little bit of that you know, rye punch when you're making a rye cocktail. It's going to have to cut through whatever else you're adding in, like vermouth or whatever. All right, next up, Old Forester Rye. This is the one with the big barley, 20% barley, 65% rye. Big, heavy brown sugar. Some cherry, yeah, there's cherry in here. A little bit of... Little bit of like a baked raspberry. Lots of chocolate. Almost a cola thing going on. And some leather. Oh, right there. Red licorice. Mmm. That's a vanilla tone going in with those red fruit. All right, let's taste it. Mmm. Wow. That is crazy. Big almost like a rye dough component. Rye dough going right immediately into this big, heavy, sour cherry, sour plum component. Big, I would say medium high vis, medium, ah, medium viscosity, but it feels very rich and dense on the palate. Cocoa, leather, um, light, subtle baking cinnamon, not a lot of, no nutmeg. There's a touch of clove in here as well. Yeah, that red licorice is in there. Big heavy chocolate on the back end. Some nice oak. A little bit of a citrus component in there as well. But to me, that's just an accent note. Everything else is very heavy, very big, dark, brooding rye. For that price point, that's a nice one. Now, this will mix in cocktails. You just have to be prepared that it's a little darker, right? So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for the vibrant, go with the bullet. But if you're looking for a sipper, I would go Forrester over the bullet, personally. Okay, that was really nice at 100 proof. Now we're stepping up to 110 with the Pikesville Rye from Heaven Hill. On the nose. Yeah, this one's definitely sweeter. Corn forward, sweetness, brown sugar, 
caramel, some a little bit of peanut in this one. Some chocolate. A little leather. It's not super complex, to be honest. It pretty much, what I just knows, that's pretty much it. There is a little red fruit, mixed red fruit in there, baked down with the brown sugar. Let's taste it. Mmm. Wow. Much more viscous than the old Forester. Denser, sweeter. That corn sweetness cutting through. So is that kind of nuttiness that I was picking up. And the nuts on this one is going to be like an almond, almost amaretto type character. I mean, it's 110 proof. Doesn't really drink it. Drinks about 100. It's just, it enters, it's got this kind of brown sugar cola component. Then you get that little rye spice coming in. That little um, amaretto, because again, it's it's almonds, roasted almonds, but it, that amount of corn sweetness actually makes it feel, feel like amaretto liqueur. Yeah, that little cola kind of sweetness is still lingering. Leather and oak on the back end. A little bit of plums going in from that rye. This adds a little bit of a plumminess to it. Mixed red fruits are in there, but again, baked down. So really, really nice. All right. Next up, old pepper rye. I would say the old pepper rye, it does have a very... I'm just sitting there picking it out. It's leather, it's it's orange oil, plums, strawberries, dried floral. <sighs> Nuts, again, that's about it for that one, but let's taste it. Mm. Oh yeah, really nice, viscous. That's solid. It's got a really heavy orange oil, which the MGPs, when they age it up, they'll get that. It's got that really nice clove, the leather tone. This one has a little bit of an apricot, little apple in it, a little bit of a light cherry as well. Sprig of mint. That grape on this one is coming through, grape skins on this one. That's the rhyme, but again, you're expecting that. Overall, very, very solid. There is a little nice... Uh, mahogany polish on the back end, a little furniture polish tone to that as well. Good spot. I recognize that in Mature M MGP, and you will see it a lot in this one. But here we go with the Nobleman from St. Sally. Again, something I blended up, but using Tokai casks oh, on the nose is ridiculous. This is... Very savory, again. Brown sugar. What is that? Brown sugar. And then it starts going into, like, plums. Like sometimes they'll put plums in Armagnac, and they'll kind of age them up in jars. And it kind of has that character going on. Some, that fresh rye bread is in here. Picking up a little bit of grape skin component as well. But that really big plum is just dominant over that as well. Savory again. Prosciutto. Cocoa. Leather and orange oil. Ugh. Okay, let's taste it. It's medium high viscosity. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Matter of fact, I think the Pikesville comes off a little sweeter. Enters. Big rye hit right up front. Rye character all over it. The grape skins, the plums, baked apples. A little bit of a brandied cherry, kind of that Armagnac plum thing is in there. Then you notice that smoky wave, a little smokiness to it, a little hint wafting smoked meat 
that's in there. Very, very light uh, cinnamon. Does not drink 107. This thing drinks like 100 proof. Orange oil and leather on the back end with good oak. I can drink a lot of that. And again, if you go to Total Wine, ask them for a taste of it. They'll let you taste it before you buy it. Oh, so, so good. So when you start getting up here, you should start getting that complexity, that big mouthfeel, dense flavors that linger for, you can only have to take another sip for five minutes and it's still chewing on it. Oh. And last but not least, Redemption 10-year-old. 10-year-old ride, $100. This is just straight MGP 95.5, just aged up. Big brown sugar, orange oil heavy, clove heavy, cracked rye, chocolatey, raspberries and cherries, and a little bit of that orange zest. Oh. It's heavy, it's dense, it's so it's everything you want. It's brown sugar. It's not, I'll say this, it's not as complex as the Nobleman, but that's why it was a runner-up to the Nobleman for my best of 2022. It's not as complex, but that ABV is giving you a ton of viscosity. So it feels very similar in viscosity between the two. And this one's a little, this one doesn't have the smoky component or anything like that. It's more straightforward, but if you're looking for just a big rye whiskey, at that proof, it's going to be hard to beat that bottle. There is a little bit of saltiness here. And the one thing I'm noticing on the profile when I'm tasting it that was different here, the prosciutto on here comes off very slick, almost like when you're, when you're tasting it, it's the... When you're eating prosciutto, it makes an oil coating on your mouth. This does that. This one has the saltiness, almost like that prosciutto, but it doesn't. It doesn't give that that coating that the Takai cast was doing. On this one, it's just it's cracked rye, orange oil, raspberry cherry, leather, oak, baking spices. Mm. but the saltiness is so unique. It's delicious. It's a fantastic rye. So again, when you start getting up to the $100, $80 price point, you should start hitting some really big flavorful tones where even if you add water to these, they should just explode even more and give you even more complexity, more roundness to the big, bold profiles that linger for minutes upon minutes. And I think that's the big difference that you're noticing as we go up, it's just longer, more complex. So I think that's what you should expect when you're out there and you're going down the aisle. Of course, next, I am going to do the Van Winkle Family Reserve for my patrons. So if you can, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound, and we're going to learn what an ultra-premium rye tastes like compared to even those. Uh, again, that channel, you're going to get everything two weeks early as far as the video releases. You're going to get ad-free videos. You're going to help keep this channel alive and going. I greatly appreciate each and every one of my patron and YouTube viewers. So regardless of where you're watching, keep you know leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day and cheers.